Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. It just seems like, I, first of all, they just have no idea how to... How to how to uh, run against her without being just the horrible racist sexist jerks that they are but uh you know even the, they thought the border issue was their big issue and as you uh you retweeted Lindsay in Graham. a stunning moment Lindsey Graham blames Donald Trump for the border security legislation not passing and you just said uh-oh Trump's lap dog is going to be in the doghouse tonight uh-huh. <laughs> yep when they did that, I was like, oh, maybe really he's flipped. Well, he goes, he's a fair weather friend. So he's going to go to whichever side's going to help keep him out of all of his secrets coming to the surface. Um, but yeah, for Re- him to do Republican. that, I'm sure he's in so much trouble. Republican James Lankford, whose bill it was, when President Biden said this in the State of the Union, he shook his head, yes. <laughs> yes, Trump's the one that stopped this. This black journalist convention, it's the same just mix of racism <laughs> and misogyny that you're like, oh my God. Watching that wasn't even like a car crash. It was a Thelma and Louise right off. No survivors. Oh my God, what is happening? I, I just am shocked they let it go as long as they did. So, and he gave Kamala Harris's campaign millions of dollars of free ads in a 30 minute interview. So you somebody, know what? Thank you. Somebody said it was like watching a baby crawl across the highway. <laughs> yes, an infant going, oh, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God. <laughs> Um, yes, I was saying it was the most awkward <laughs> racial moment since, uh, you know, the terrorists made Bruce Willis stand in uh, Harlem with the I hate N-word sign. I thought Samuel Jackson was going to have to come right. to yeah. save Trump. Just let's get out of here. Um, you uh, you said this November Kamala Harris is going to receive more votes than any other Democratic presidential candidate in history. I would put money on it. Um, you know who else would? Vladimir Putin. <laughs> said yet i'm out here's the hostages i'm gonna make my deal now i yeah, mean even he's done he's like we're gonna have to go about taking um, over democracy in a different way because this village idiot is done he's done but i mean what a great moment for america dana but also what a humiliation for for trump who was couldn't stop shooting his stupid traitorous mouth off about oh i'll get evan out but not unless you elect me and putin will only do it for me i'm the only one who could do it it's blackmailing yeah, i guess america. not yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ay, ay, ay. Um, yeah, you retweeted. Allison uh, Gill said uh, Donald is going to lose, and then he is going to be convicted by Kamala Harris's Department of Justice, and we are here for it. I believe that too, and I coined Carmela. Yes, you did. Carmela is coming. Just okay. Agree to that. Thank you. Yes, very ma'am. Yeah, there's a you lot did. of beautiful things that are going to happen <laughs> in January. <laughs> Yeah, I well, listen, you pointed out, uh, you retweeted, we were talking about Gloria Johnson. We just had her on, what was that, a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Um, that she is a member of the Tennessee Three, has won her primary, and will face uh, Marsha Blackburn. I have that, and maybe it's the happy clappy, it's the joyful <laughs> that Kamala Harris is bringing. But I feel like we have hope again. We have hope that all things are possible. I know it's not, uh, it's a long shot in places like Tennessee, but I don't know anymore. I think a I lot of we, states are back in play that weren't. I don't think Tennessee is as red as we think. I think it's a gerrymandered state uh-huh. and it's a voter suppressed state when you have a statewide election like this i can see something happening like kansas where you know how this the senator's races have gone red but the gubernatorial race has gone blue with for Bashir the last few years in the last couple cycles i can really see people walking in and even if they vote for trump tired of Marsha blackburn yep. yeah. and wanting her out i can actually see her losing her election and us not getting tennessee but if enough people get out and vote we could actually see Tennessee turn purple. I, I really think yeah. we could. Yeah, I think a lot of things are, are in play that we, you know, we that we had not thought of previously. Um, date and kiss and marry this Harris campaign. Yes. They're just <laughs> killing it. They're phenomenal. killing it. You know, our friend in Chicago, Richard Chu, was telling me last week, and I didn't get a chance to say it on air, there's a lot of black people in Chicago that are funneling money down to their family members in the southern states, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, yeah. to get them out and registered to vote. And so that they can understand how important this is, there's a wave of support coming from the Midwest in Chicago down to the southern states and the black community that's actually helping galvanize them to get out and vote in this election. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and I got to say, Dana, the, the hits just keep coming. Just three headlines. Harris is endorsed by border mayors in Swing State, Arizona, as she faces GOP criticism on uh, immigration. I mean, this whole border czar thing, they're the one that called her that. Nobody ever mm-hmm. called her the border. You know, it's just uh, GOP Arizona mayor warns Trump will refuse to leave office if he wins a second uh, a second term. The Republican mayor of Mesa, Arizona, warned he doesn't yep. believe Trump will leave office. Uh, he said um, uh, his, uh, the, his comments to Christian supporters that if 
he wins the presidency, they would never need to vote again. So he, he's been speaking out about, about that. The Republican mayor of a major Arizona city pens scorching op-ed uh, endorsing Kamala Harris. This is Mayor that uh, letter is John Giles. By the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. He said he made the case for Harris uh, for over his own party's nominee. Uh, he invoked the memory of John McCain and his motto, Country First. Um, he said, I call on other Arizona Republicans to join me in choosing country over party this election and to vote against Trump. Um, latest polls I've seen have Gallego up over yeah. Kerry Lake. And Mesa you know, is the conservative chunk of, of the yeah. valley where Phoenix is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Right. so but it's also one of the, it's, I think it's the 36th biggest city in the nation, is it what is. I read in his letter. It's, and he was saying that, like, this is it. Infrastructure. We yes. got money from the Biden yep. Harris administration to fix our roads. We have protection at the border. Yep. We have this from the Harris administration. She has actually done what she said she was going to do. Yeah. It is a beautiful letter, and I'm yeah. so glad people are finally yeah. starting to speak out because people listen to their elected officials when they respect them. They truly do. Yep. Mesa yeah. is the largest suburb in the United States. Oh, yes. thank you for that Arizona fun it's, fact. It's, Former Arizona, yeah. Arizona resident, yeah. uh, Chris LeBlanc. 500,000 people, have it. and it's a suburb. 